Hello and welcome to the Exeter Authors Association Coffee Mornings. My name is PJ Reid. I am a poet, a novelist and, well, since Covid I've become a playwriter as well. Now today I want to talk to you about poetry and some modern poets that I like. Today I will be having a look at this poet, Nick Armbrister. Now he is a modern northern poet hailing from Manchester and his poetry is more punk poetry than anything else in the style of John Cooper Clarke. Always an amazing poet, that one, and funnily enough, they both come from the north of England. Now, first of all, before we start on his poetry, I think you need to actually know a bit more about him. So, I'm going to read the back of this. It says, Hi, my name is Nick, I'm from Manchester, England. I've been writing since April 1996 and published since November 96. Very much part of the late 90s small press writing scene, published in mags, themes, anthologies and later in the zeros, online and in my own books. I've worked for an American publisher before, but left due to editing issues. Self-published a hundred books under Nick Armbrister and my pen name, Jimmy Boom Syntax. My variety of work is huge. I've written with a wide variety of poets stroke authors, love to be creative, like hiking and high ground, and also love tattoos and aeroplanes. Right, so there you are, Nick, and I, I assume this is actually a picture of the poet. Hopefully he's okay, not drowning. Now I've gone, this is his latest book. It's entitled 1000 Plastic Trinkets, which was sent to me. And it's published by Cyberwit, which is an Indian publisher. Okay, and the first poem I'm going to read is one I really enjoy. It's called The Painter. When it comes to art, there is no sacrifice. Not worth it, you see. It's mesmerising, the beauty and the cost. I think that's very true because the cost of writing, the cost of being an artist in any form is great. Uh, the next one I really enjoyed was called I R. These five years of 1987 and 1991 when there was no one, nobody for me, except myself, kingdom of me. Things happened all the wrong ways, dealt with it myself and it showed. I did survive and now look back, if only I had known how it would be. I think that poem is well, it's different from the first one, that poem is powerful. And this one, and I think this, this sums up sort of 1980s thought, it's called Grab. Bored, within I see what tomorrow will bring. Today I need more, to replace the bad bits and have it okay, we shall see what life brings. New to this place, that's mine. A new flat, a job, maybe a girl, no more trauma for me anymore. These are my needs, can I attain them in this money-grabbing world? Mm -hmm. um, well, a very true slice of life. Welcome to capitalism. Right. Those are the three poems I've really enjoyed from 1000 Plastic Trinkers, Trinkets. And this is a long prose poem that Nick sent me, which I will attempt to read. Um, it's quite exciting, and if you wait till the end, uh, there's a bit of a dramatic climax. It's called Frankie. She was a normal girl from a normal town who wanted something different than a job and husband, for her happiness meant achieving meaningful things. This started passing her school grades and a year at college. Then she joined the Royal Air Force to become a pilot. It wasn't a case of there being no female pilots. It was the job she wanted to do, which raised a few questions. 
washing for real and you're not one of them, a Russian. Against all odds, Frankie passed RAF selection. She got top marks in every single test and exam. For the physical education, she was given a 25% lead. No, that is wrong, she replied. I want the same. And they listened to her and observed with interest. Here was a rec recruit who was ideal in all ways. She could help recruit more women to the forces, especially capable, motivated and skilled individuals. Frankie entered basic flying training and passed. The chipmunk plane was so easy to fly and the jet provost was simply a dream. Then the speedy hawk in the Welsh Valley. Posting and further training on a tornado attack jet, Frankie had achieved her aim and was now a pilot. She received adept skills of navigation, evading and defeating enemy interceptors, bomb and missile training on many target types. But most special part was the nuke part, her baby. The reason why Frankie joined the Royal Air Force was this, to safeguard the citizens and the Western way of life. She would do her duty without hesitation or question. Sooner than she dared ask, the events happened. Exercise Operation Able Archer 83 kicked off. War followed as was intended and it all went hot. NATO and enemy forces clashed big time. It was the real deal and everything was launched. Frankie flew Panavia Tornado GR1 low under enemy radar, a one-way mission to drop WE-177 thermonuclear bombs. The jets flew singly on random routes for speed and surprise. The targets were Soviet and Warsaw Pact air bases deep in the rear. All, all manner of grounded launched missiles and guns fired at them. Several jets were hit, but most got through to bomb visually or by computer. Frankie dropped two bombs on Soviet airbase L-187. It housed a tactical nuclear bomber unit and interceptor squadrons. Nothing could live on the base or surrounding area. The mission details didn't matter, nor do the crew's fate. Their mission was one part of World War Three, and humanity's fall. Our world ended in November 1983, and I was just 12. Yeah, a rather sombre, thought-provoking poem to end with. So if you want to listen to more of Mick's work, He's, he has, well, as he said, he had a hundred, a hundred books on Amazon, Lulu, etc. His latest one, 1000 Plastic Trinkets, is now available. I recommend Mick if you like modern punk poetry. And if you're a fan of John Cooper Clark, read his work. Right, thanks for listening and be safe. <laughs> Bye.